Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the replay. Hi, everybody, and welcome to YouTube for those who will watch the recording. I'm going to wait just a few seconds, a minute or so, before I begin. And then I'm going to play a little song because not only is this video about why my first book was a children's book, but it's also a celebration. It's also a celebration. So I hope you can hear the song that I'm playing because there's a reason I'm doing this. I hope you can hear it. It's that Stevie Wonder happy birthday song. And there's a reason that I'm playing this. Because I'm celebrating something that I'm very excited about and I'm looking forward to sharing. Hi, Sister Melissa Jacobs. How are you, my sister? So, if you can hear the music in the background, I'm playing Stevie Wonder's Happy Birthday. The reason I'm doing that is because yesterday, January the 10th, marked the six months birthday of my first book which was a children's book which is a children's book called the purity purse and so i decided for the six month birthday of my first book to share why i decided my first book will be a children's book and so i'm sharing it for a very important reason but before we do that we gotta sing a six month happy birthday Birthday to ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday. All right, so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna sing the whole time we're on here, and I want to be quick with this, but um, I just wanted to share because this is the sixth month birthday of the release of my first book which was a children's book and this book literally was like a baby that God placed on the inside of me and told me to birth you know and I believe that each and every one of us have babies and I'm not just talking about natural babies but I'm talking about spiritual babies that God has placed in us whether it's a ministry a book a business, a vision that he has placed inside of us and he wants us to birth that thing and it, it requires obedience. But I wanted to share three reasons that my first book was a children's book. Why well, my first book is a children's book and it's called uh, The Purity Purse. It's called The Purity Purse. This is my first book and it is a children's book and the target is tweens ages 8 to 13 okay tweens ages 8 to 13 so that's my first book and I'm also sharing this because I honestly believe that everybody has at least one book in them and if I could really shout from the mountaintops that if you have in your heart to write a book to seek God about it and to do it you know to begin uh, typing or writing that book I just really believe that right now this timing that there's like this super natural grace for uh, authors to write books and so everybody has a story inside of them I believe but I wanted to share the three reasons that my first book was a children's book reason number one reason number one is really simple but the most important the first reason I wrote a children's book is because God told me to point blank period God told me to I remember it like it was yesterday I think it was uh, April the 15th but it was April in 2015 I had just dropped my friend off at the airport and I was taking a nap it was good Friday and I was like yes it's about to be spring break because I was off for a week I work in the school system and literally I was taking a nap and Holy Spirit woke me up literally like and I heard God clearly say you know write this book and I already knew I had a book books plural in me but this time specifically God was like you need to do this and you need to do it now and so literally I couldn't even take my nap have you ever experienced that God was talking to you and you're trying to you tired you're trying to you know still sleep and rest but you just can't 
because that thing is won't settle until you do it. And so that's how it was for me. So I literally got up in my bed from my little Good Friday nap that I never was able to take. And literally, God began to download into me the name of the main characters, the plot, all those things that would happen. Because this book is a um, it's a fiction book. Hi, Jane. Hi, Nikita. And um, so this book is a fiction book. So God literally woke me up and began to download in me the names. Hey, Shika. Hi, everybody. The names of the characters in the book. So that's the number one reason why my first book was a children's book, okay, is because God told me to do it. And again, if I can be honest, I wish I could just shout from the mountaintops to everybody that has in their heart that wants to write a book. I wish I could shout, please do it, because what's inside of you, people in this world need. And I just believe that it's a supernatural, it's a... It's a special grace right now for people who want to write books. It's a lot easier than you think. And so, but that's the first reason why my first book was a children's book. Because God told me to. And I'm a school counselor, so I work in the public school system. And I was deeply bothered and burdened by what I was seeing the kids uh, go through. You know, the influences that they would have through you know, social media, you know, we have kids very young that have these cell phones and not all of them are prepared to deal with basically having their own computer because that's what smartphones are, they're computers. And then the music that they would listen to is not just them hearing it and dancing it. They begin to act out these things that these grown people are talking about in the music and also the television shows. There are so many reality TV shows, so many shows that are catered towards kids, they really aren't appropriate. And it opens their eyes to things that are not, that I don't believe they're ready to handle things that they don't really even need to be discussing. But as a school counselor that has to deal with, you know, certain issues, certain disputes, certain occurrences that happen, I was deeply burdened and bothered by the uh, impure things that they were saying, you know, or acting out. And it bothered me. It bothered me. It bo I'm like, these children are babies. Why are they talking about sex like this? Why... I mean, and when I say like this, I mean inappropriately. Why are they, you know, fussing and cussing at each other like this and they're so young? You know, and not just in the school system, just being out and about, seeing it, it, it burdened me and it bothered me. So that's the first reason why my first book was a children's book. Because God told me to do it. And I saw with my own eyes as an educator in the public school system Things that really, really bothered me and that were not okay for our children to be acting out and for our children to be having access to. Their eyes were open to some things that were just even inappropriate for adults, if you ask me. Okay, so number two. The number two reason that my first book was a children's book is because I believe there's a great need to invest in our children. They're not just little cute, you know, little miniature people that we get their hair done and we put cute outfits on. You know, our children are watching us. We are their number one teachers, especially if they live with us. But even as an educator, I have to watch myself because these babies are watching what you're doing. You can say one thing. We can say one thing. But if we're doing another, you know, they're going to look at what, what we're doing. And so um, I wanted to share Matthew 19 verses 13 and 14 because even in the word of God, it talks about how important children are and how we shouldn't just cast them to the side. Like, oh, go on in that other room, girl. We over here talking. You don't need to hear none of this. Or why you want to know an answer to that? You know, if a child asks something about, you know, sex or of sexual nature or just something that's kind of an adult thing, to not shoo them off, but to give an answer that's appropriate for them. Because if we don't answer it, they may go to their little friends and get an answer that is false, that is uh, immoral, that is not the best for them. And so um, in Matthew chapter 19 and verses 13 and 14, hi Alicia, how you doing sis? In chapter and verses 13 and 14 it says, one day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could lay his hands on them and pray for them. 
But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering them, for bothering him. But Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to those who are like these children. And he placed his hand on them and he blessed them before he left. So Jesus saw the value in a child. He didn't just see them as a cute little, you know, child to just, you know, push away in church and give them popcorn, you know, and watch any old video while we're in the, in the church watching, you know, listening to the sermon. No, Jesus said, let the children come to me. Let the children sit at my feet. Let me lay hands on these children and bless them because even in their young age, they can do great and mighty things. And so if Jesus saw the value of children, so should we. And so that's the second reason why my first book was a children's book, because we should be investing in our children. I saw a problem that deeply bothered me and I responded to it through a book, through a book answer, uh, responding to the things that bothered me with our children, you know, talking about inappropriate sexual things without it you know, without even feeling comfortable to talk to adults about it. You know, our children acting out what they're seeing in reality TV shows, you know, you know, men running through women like it's nothing or disrespecting them and women disrespecting themselves and one another through fussing and cussing and stealing each other's men and all this foolishness that we laugh at on TV, but our children are receiving this as seeds in their heart and acting it out in a young age. Whatever seed we sow and allow to be sold into the hearts of our children is going to uh, blossom, you know, it's going to grow. And so instead of placing them in front of the TVs and the, you know, cell phones and the devices and uh, what are those old tablets and all that kind of stuff? That's fine, of course, you know, for our children to have those things, but also sit them in front of us, take them out to eat, you know, and, and, and share with them and talk to them. And for those that don't have natural children, you know, they're children around us, nieces, nephews. Um, uh, friends of ours that have children that we can invest in because I really believe that in this scripture Jesus is saying and he's proven that children are great soil oh their hearts are just so impressionable they're so impressionable and they are listening and they are watching to what we say and so that tells us that, that their hearts have great soil and it's up to us what seeds we plant in that soul of their hearts because it's going to grow. It's going to grow. And God holds us accountable. It says in Matthew chapter 18, um, uh, verses, I'll read verse 2 and then I'll jump down. It says, Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you come and turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. And so then I'm jumping down to verse 5 and it says, And anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trust me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. That's kind of serious. And if y'all are liking what I'm saying, let me see some little thumbs up or something because that helps others to be able to see it. And also I ask that you share it because I believe that uh, this is a word that others need to hear because I believe that there's a lot of books and many people that are just sitting in there and those books need to be birthed because there are people in this world that need the help. Uh, that you're going to write in the book. They may not walk into the church building. You may never meet them face to face, but they will pick up a book uh, or read a book that somebody gives to them. So uh, what it says in Matthew 18, verse uh, 2 to 6, about us being held accountable uh, to what, you know, if we allow, cause the children to fall into sin, you know, God holds us accountable, you know, of what, what comes into their little hearts and I think that we should take that seriously you know I mean I just can't stress enough you know that our children need us our children are valuable and we need to be investing in them not just in their nice shoes not just in their clothes and their hairs and crochet braids and Jordans and all that but we need to be investing in our baby's hearts 
because what happened a lot of people that I know including myself you know certain things happened as a child and that started the cycle of uh you know sexual immorality or you know inappropriate behaviors or low self-esteem or low uh uh not feeling that they're valuable that stuff starts in childhood the devil does not play fair he doesn't care how young we are he will have people sowing seeds in the heart of children even in the womb even in a womb, if a child is feeling rejected. Hey, my Shawnee. Hey, sunshine. So it's really important that we are accountable to what we allow to be placed in the hearts of our children. And so that's the second reason that my first book was a children's book. Because we need to invest in our children. We need to invest in them, not just materially. I don't even know if that's a word, materially. But not just material things, but um, spiritually. We need to be invested in our children. They're not too young to be taught about the ways of God. They're not too young to be taught about um, purity. And uh, that's why my first book is about that. Because I know of the pitfalls and the things that happened to me when I was young. Hey, Kimmy, how are you? So that's the second reason why my first book was a children's book. Um, is because we need to invest in our children. And as an educator, I just was and still am bothered by some of the things I see our children acting out. And I know it's because of the things they're watching, the things they're hearing, and the things that, you know, they're seeing other people do that they look up to. And so we want to be the ones to sow those good seeds into the, our children, seeds of purity. And uh, my friend Janetta, I believe, has a great way of defining that the Lord gave her, the, a great way of defining uh, purity to children, and that's a uh, clean mind, clean heart, clean hands. What uh, we allow our children to watch and listen to is it's entering into them. That's what is feeding their soul. You know, and it gets into their heart, and then we wonder why they're acting these things out. Well, it's because of the things they're seeing people do on TV, uh, in music, um, and on social media. But a lot of times, the consequences aren't shown. So our babies don't know that there's a consequence to that. You know, there's a path that it will lead them down that will not give them the happiness, the joy, the fulfillment that they desire, the sense of purpose. But that's really in Christ. And we got to sow those seeds in children at a young age. And so the third and final reason that my first book was a children's book is because we get to share our story. You get to share your story. I, I got to share my story and it was fun. Writing a fiction book, which I, I honestly didn't think my first book was going to be a fiction book. But it was really fun because you get to tell a story. And, you know, a lot of people learn great messages powerful messages through stories you think about it when you hear a sermon sometimes a pastor may close or in the middle of his sermon he may tell a story and it grabs the attention you know and even when I'm teaching uh, lessons at school with kids and I feel like I'm kind of losing them in the lesson sometimes I may begin to tell a story and I see them perk up because it's like suspenseful and they're wondering how it's going to end and all those things so stories are fun they're fun to read, and I found out they're fun to write, you know, because you're going to have a um, a plot. You're going to have a plot that's happening. You're going to have a setting. You get to describe what people look like and what they like and what they were wearing and all those kinds of things, and it's really fun. And so I really enjoyed uh, being able to describe in fiction and tell this story about a little girl because the main character in my book is a sixth grader named Jay Brazelton, and uh, she's in middle school, and she has male and female friends, and she faces some peer pressure, and some things that she kind of is like, mm, I don't know if that's right, but if I don't do these things, you know, will I still have friends, or is it really even that deep, you know, and so it was really fun writing um, a fiction book for my first book, because I got to tell um, a story and you know that was really really fun to me and so I just wanted to share those three reasons watch the replay if you didn't see the beginning and so the first reason is 
uh, that I wrote a children's, my first book was a children's book, is because uh, God told me to, point blank, period. That's why. He woke me up when I was trying to take a nap on Good Friday, messed up my good old nap, but I'm so glad that he did because it showed me so much. Hi, Brother Marty. And so the second reason that I, my first book was a children's book is because we need to invest in our children. We need to invest. And one of the ways that I responded to the problem I was seeing, that burden that bothered me with our still children being in, you know, sexual immorality, our children just doing behaviors that can lead to destructive lifestyles, even at a young age. And I was bothered by that, and so I responded with a book. So that's the second reason, uh, because I know that it's, in, I believe it's important to invest in our children. And the third reason, because it's fun, and everybody likes a story. And so that is the third reason. Hi, my sister, Tanisha. That's the third reason that my first book was a children's book. And so it's the six-month anniversary. Hey, Tasha. It's the six-month anniversary or birthday of my book. Woof, 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 woof. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And so that's why I shared this. And, um, you know, last but certainly not least, I've said it in the beginning of this video I said it in the middle and I'm gonna say it again I believe that you know all of us if we wanted to we could write a book I know that we could and I just believe that there are a lot of people that have a desire to write a book but they feel overwhelmed and I'm here to tell you surely you can do it if you have ever taken a pen before and written anything down you can write a a book. God has placed something in you. This book was like a baby that I birthed. That's why I'm celebrating six months. Don't have any natural children yet, but I have a few spiritual babies. And what I mean by that is uh, God placed it inside of me. And that through obedience, I had to birth that thing and share it with the world. Just like you do your beautiful natural child. You know, you post the pictures on Facebook. You share it with everyone. You want everyone to know about this baby. I believe that God has placed spiritual babies in all of us. And that can be ministry. That can be a business. That can be a book. It can be many things. But he wants us to just do it. If he's placing it on our in our hearts to do it, we need to do it. You know, it could be a... A book about natural hair. I'm saying that because I see my hairdresser on there who I miss very much. It could be a book about your experiences in life. It could be, you know, a problem that you see that you want, that you have an answer to. Or, you know, let's say you went through a broken relationship and God taught you a lot through that. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a long book. But um, I just believe that there's this special grace and grace means God has empowered, empowered us to do something. I believe that right now in this season, there's a special grace for authors to write a book and to publish it. And so I may be doing a scope in the coming weeks, just a real basic one of what to do when you desire to write a book. But I just wanted to share that. Thanks for tuning in. Watch the replay if you missed it. But I wanted to share on the sixth month, a birthday of my first book, The Purity Purse, which is a children's book. This is the book right here. It actually now comes with um, a bracelet because I wanted, not only when the children read it, it's for tweens, ages 8 to, um, excuse me, ages 9 to 13. And I wanted them, to, when they put this book down, for them to have a piece of jewelry, you know, so that when they see it on their wrist or they see it on their little dresser, they'll remember that seed of purity of, um, you know, what I was saying, uh, you know, clean mind, clean heart, clean hands, um, which is a simple definition of purity that my dear friend uh, shared with me. Um, I wanted them to have something to be able to remind them of it and for them to wear it, for them to rock it. And so thanks for tuning in. I love you all. And I do, just to celebrate, when I have a, spe I have a special giveaway um, uh, coming up, I have an accessory line coming out that it was, it was birthed out of, you know, the, the points that are made in this book, but it's for boys and girls, men and women. So it's accessories with a message. I actually have one of the best 
a sellers right here and this can be for men or women boys or girls but this right here is the bold uh necklace i don't like calling a dog tag because y'all aren't dogs and i know it's not you know you're not thinking you're a dog but anyway you know, in the military, they call it dog tags. But it's a bold, it kind of looks like it's backwards on this video. But it's a bold um, tag. And it's really, really, really a nice weight. Um, can you see it like that? Yeah. I don't know, y'all. Anyway. But it says bold and it has this cross. And on the back, it has um, a scripture, Joshua 1, 9, that says, be strong and courageous for the Lord your God is with you no matter where you go. And so I am giving this away and I will mail it to you and send it to the first person that uh, inboxes me and just say, I want it. That's all you got to say. And then I reply with your um, address of requesting, you know, your address for me to send it to you. But all you have to do is say, I want it. And this is one of the best sellers because I have been to a few events with the uh, jewelry line or accessories line uh, and it's accessories with a message and if you saw the 12 days of Christmas video that I did right before uh, the end of the year I, I showcased a few of those so anyway all you have to do is inbox me saying I want it and I will send this to you. I always get compliments on it. And it's a great message. And it can be a tool for witnessing. And to remind you that whatever God has called you to do, be bold. Even when you feel timid or scared or weak, know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So if you're just tuning in, watch the replay because... I hope that some of the things I shared in here will encourage you to do what God has told you to do, whether it's write a book, whether it's to start a business, uh, if it's a ministry he's put in your heart. So you all have a blessed evening. Thanks for spending some of your time with me. I appreciate it. And um, love you all. God bless. Bye-bye.